Hello Rubyists. Today we are going to set up a Ruby on Rails application server using Ansible and also deploy an application to it using Capistrano. So what do we need to be able to, to do this? Well, first of all, we need to have Ansible installed on your machine. If you have a Mac, it's and you use Homebrew, it's very easy. Brew install Ansible. I'm, I already have it installed, so I'm not going to run that, but that will get you Ansible running on your machine. So after that, we need a server. So I have a server. Uh, it has a domain name pointed to its IP address. You'll need to set that up with your, um, your name server provider. Uh, I've set it up with a root password that I know that I can use to do my initial server setup. And so that's ready to go with, with Ansible. So with Ansible, we need to have our domain name and we need to have a bunch of variables set up to install our application. So we need to have our Ruby version. Our Ruby version needs to be the same version that you specify in your Rails app. So in .ruby version, this application has 2.2.4. So that's the version that you'll need. So there's my application variables. Uses Postgres, database name, database user and password. Obviously you'll need a more a stronger password than that for your actual application. This is for the example only. Um, application name, uh, passenger server name, which is your domain name, um, and also is used by Let's Encrypt to make your SSL certificates. In your host file, also your domain name. That's what it will use to set up your application. So we're ready to go and and start using Ansible to set up our server. So the first thing we have is the pre-setup and that's going to set up um, all the stuff that Ansible needs to actually install your software. So it's going to install Python, it's going to upload your SSH key. Um, uh, and your SSH key, that's something else that you need in your server setup. It's actually in your pre-setup it's actually a path on your local directory, on your local hard drive, which is your public key. So don't forget that. So we're, we're ready to run, to run this. It's gonna ask for that root password that you've set up. So it's logging into the server, needs to verify the identity. It's going to ask you this a couple of times. Um, I haven't sorted out yet how to have that only ask once, but it's pretty quick, so it shouldn't be a big deal to um, to enter that a few times. Okay, so now you have a deployment user. They have their, you have your SSH key copied up for that deployment user so that you can get on to the server. So Ansible can get onto the server as that user running from your shell. 
and the user is going to be able to run passwordless sudo to install the stuff that we need. So now we're ready to start running the server setup. And so if we come into here, we can see that these are all the things that we're going to install. Now, there is this one build depths, which is all the dependencies for your build stuff. Uh, and so if you have any external dependencies that you need to install for your application, um, like image magic, um, which is one that I've added recently by request, uh, add them to the, find out the apt package name and add it to the list here of items for your build dependencies and it will install when the, um, the build dependencies are installed by Ansible. So we're able to go and start this running now. So I'm going to pause and come back because this takes a little while to run. Um, so we'll be back with you shortly. Okay, and that has run. So Ansible has installed all the stuff we need to run a server now. So all of our dependencies, Ruby, Bundler, Redis, Memcached if you need them, it's um, Postgres, set up your database in Postgres, added Passenger for Nginx and HTTPS, configured Nginx, and installed your SSL certificates and restarted Nginx for you um, and set up a firewall with just some basic rules to only allow traffic on HTTP and for SSH. So now a web server running. There's no application running for it yet, but that's running on our server. So next we turn to our application, okay? And so we're gonna use Capistrano to deploy the application. Um, first up, so first up we have the gems that we need to do that. So Capistrano, bundler for Capistrano, Capistrano for Rails and Capistrano RBM. So these are going to allow us to deploy our application. So add them to your gem file and run bundle. I've already bundled that, so I'm not going to do that now, but that will install the stuff that you need. So once you have Capistrano running, sorry, installed, um, you need to Capify your app. So that's just going to basically install your real basic Capistrano stuff into the application, which is like your cat file, your deploy.rb and a production.rb. Again, I've already run that for this application, so I'm not going to, um, to do that now. But so your first stop now is your cat file. So this is where you enable all the parts of Capistrano that you need. So in the future, Git won't be the default, like nothing will be the default, so you have to add in what you want. Um, I think at the moment Git will still be default with a deprecation, but just if you add that stuff in, then you'll be good to go. We want the RBM bundler, Rails assets, so it will run asset precompile migrations so that you can run your database migrations. Um, I have a whenever task uh, for cron. Um, you might not need that one if you don't run, want to run any cron stuff. You also need to set a couple of RBM variables. So for the way the playbook is set up with Ansible, run RBM type user and the RBM Ruby, which needs to again match your dot Ruby version. So again, for this app, 2.2.4. So it will also set up your deploy dot RB. So real basic stuff, application, um, which will match your application name from your playbook, your Git repo, um, where RBM is installed. Rails M, which for me is the same as the stage production. It's just there so that I can use it as 
a variable in this task here. Um, set where you're going to deploy to. Set your linked directories that are not part of source control that just live on the server. So mostly they're just stuff that's part of your app. You probably don't have anything in them. The only extra one I have is where I back up my database to before I upload it to S3. So that's um, a pretty standard file um, for deploy.rb. I've only added a couple of things, which is um, restarting the application with Passenger, which is just touching the restart file. Um, the only other thing I've added is a task to upload your .env file and also just to link that into your current working path on the server from the shared directory because that's not going to be in source control because it's sensitive information. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So we're ready to start deploying the application. So we want to run deploy check. This sets up all the, the directories your application needs. It also just checks that any dependencies the application is expecting to see are installed, which has been taken care of by Ansible. So that looks good. So now we're going to have a look at our .env file. So ideally, we never kind of really want to log into the server for any kind of maintenance stuff. Um, in the past, before .env, I've always kind of used configuration files, which can contain sensitive information, AWS keys, this kind of thing. So we don't want to store them, the keys in the repository, but we'd also like our configuration stuff to be able to be stored and then just have it be able to reference our environment. So the way that I handle this is by having this .env .production or .staging or whatever environment that is file. So this file, don't check it into source control, add it to your git ignore. And whenever you need to add a new environment variable to your file, to your application, sorry, you add it to this file. Like it might be AWS key, whatever you might need to add in the future. Um, your starting point is probably just gonna be your secret key base, your database user and password. So we need that to be available to our file. So using the task that I've made there, we, um, we run that. So this is just going to upload the file into our shared directory so that it's available to the app. It's not going to go up as .env.production. That's just so the local system knows which environment to copy it to. It's just going to be dot .env on the server. Which means we're ready now to deploy to production. So we've set our server. We have our roles for the single, for the simple app that we run. We have web, app, and DB roles all on the one server. So we're ready to deploy. So that's just our last Capistrano task. So I'm going to pause again while I run this because this one takes a little bit of time because the bundle install and the yarn install for a first time deployment can take a little bit of time. So we're we'll back in a second. Okay, so Capistrano has done its thing now. Run through and deployed our application. It's cloned our code from GitHub, in, installed our gems, compiled our assets, updated the database, restarted our application. So now Rails app up and running on our server. And if we go and refresh that same page, We have a Rails app. This one's empty because there's no posts or anything in my database. But that's it. That's a Rails app up and running using Ansible and then Capistrano. Um, 
I hope that helps anyone who needs to get that up and running. Um, if there's anything that doesn't quite make sense or you need help with, please reach out to me, send me an email, um, ask me a question. I'm happy to help. Um, and I hope that Ansible treats you well. Enjoy your application.